share. I don't want to take too long because it's very late in here in San Francisco. And my wife is going to finish this this session of, um, of teachings and prayer. But um, I want to share with you a couple of things that the Lord told me this morning because I have something different. Something that I'm going to share tomorrow with the, the Spanish congregations. But um, I want to pray uh, real quick so we can get started. Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have given us to share your word, Lord. I ask you that your Holy Spirit guide me through so I can explain, you know, your thoughts that you put in my mind. I bless all the pastors in Asia, Lord. Thank you for the opportunity for their teachings, you know, Lord. I learned so much, you know, from them because they live in a different part of the world. You have, you know, you teach them in a different way, but we all can learn from each other. I ask you to please bless your word. Look after, please, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We, we're having a problem in, in, in society these days that prayer has become something of an emergency when you have a necessity it's like you pull the fire alarm and then you want to pray but not before in a lot of times we don't understand that prayer is something that we have to do it's something that the lord you know like pastor freddy said the lord gave us the opportunity to to work to do his work and a lot of times we're praying but what is our motive why do we pray sometimes we forget we're like little children when when you're a, a child you learn to walk but you know it it takes you have to take baby steps First you crawl, and then you do little steps, and then you learn to walk, and then you run. So our prayer life should be the same way. But sometimes we tend to go back. We go back to crawling because we pray, but we don't pray in the way God asks us to do. Or um, Pastor Freddie was teaching us how, you know, the Lord give us the authority over all things that he gave us the authority over everything and and it's interesting because the, in the book of john it says everything that you ask my father and you know my name i will do so he gave us the dominion like pastor Fred said but a lot of times we don't have a purpose for our prayers we we just simply just address the Lord like if somebody that we know and we, we're very close to. And we forget the basics of our prayer life. Um, if you read on, on, on Matthew 21, 22, it says, And whatever you ask for in prayers, having faith and believing, you will receive. So, so when you ask the Lord for something and then you have the, the assurance that he will respond, he will do. But what is the motive behind your prayers? Are you constantly asking the Lord, Lord, uh, provide me these. Lord, give me these. Are you always asking for things for yourself? Or you have grown up, you're actually walking and looking at the necessities and the needs of other people. Are you, have you grown up a little bit that you know that he knows your necessities? He knows your needs. You don't need to ask him. He knows everything. But why did he ask us, us to pray? Simply because he wants to hear our voice. He said that he will do this thing so his name can be glorified. One of the things that I want to bring up tonight is that we don't call in the presence. 
We don't need the presence of the Lord. We need him to stay with us. He lived with us. So if you have, like Sister you know, Raquel said, we need that relationship with the Lord. It's a, it's a communion that we have. It's, we're never apart. He lives within us. And if he lives within us, the Holy Spirit is going to guide us to always pray the right way. Pray the way that you're supposed to. The way of the will of God. It's because we don't, we don't do things according to what we think. We're trying to do the will of God. So everything that we ask in prayer, it will be done. But let me just give you an example. When, when you need something, when you actually need something, the Lord already knows him. But if you ask the Lord, it's like Pastor Fred said, the right way. We cannot manipulate the Lord to do what we want to do. We can ask him to do, to fulfill a need, to heal, and he can do all those things. But the important thing is, how do you ask? I'm not going to take too much time, like I said, but I want to get this in, in your heart. In, in James 4, 3, it said, Yet, even when you do pray, your prayers are not answered because you pray just for selfish reasons. So I ask you, are you, are you just praying because you want to have everything in life? You know, for your selfish reason? We cannot be selfish. Or Lord, or God, or Father in heaven was not selfish. He gave us his son for us to pay our debt for, for our sins. So we cannot be selfish. You can ask the Lord anything you want. But is he going to give it to you? It depends. Like I said, what is the motives behind, you know, these things? Why are you asking the Lord? Why are you praying for things that maybe you don't even need? The two greatest things the Lord teaches, to love him over everything. And the second is love thy neighbor. Do you worry about the brother in church that doesn't have a job? That he has a family to sustain? Did you take a time to, to add him to your prayers? To say, Lord, I ask you for my brother. Please, you, Jehovah, Jireh, or provider, please provide for him. But sometimes we're so into ourselves, we are so selfish that we don't even worry about thy neighbor, our brother in need. We need to get out of this mind. We need to get a new mindset. We need to be resetted and go back, you know, the way the Lord has, you know, originally created us for. But, but we as humanity, we lost our way. So that's what the Lord has to send our Savior, Jesus Christ, again to re-educate us. He puts us on this air for a purpose. Our prayers have to have a purpose. It has to be. It, prayer is, is, a, is a daily thing. It's a thing that you do all day long. I don't know if when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you do is that, Lord, thank you. Because you have given me a new day. Thank you because, you know, you let me see another day. Because my wife is, is good. My children are healthy. I have a place to live. Are you grateful? That's prayer. In, in the Bible, it talks about nine different types of prayer. But I'm not going to go into that. M m the point I want to make today is that what is the purpose of your prayer? Are you just praying because, you know, you only want things for you? In another version of James 4, 3, said you ask and you do not receive because you ask wrongly, so you can spend it on your passions. 
Can it be that we only ask for things for ourselves? Like we want to accumulate, you know, goods in this earth? That's not what we're here for. That's not what the Lord made us. I wrote this in most Christians. Believe prayer depends of a person's faith. Praying can help the believer come to a greater understanding of God's purpose for their lives. Christians interpret the response that they might get to the prayers into the following ways. God answers prayers, but not always in the way the person wants. What is your motive for what you're praying about? One thing that I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, it was a blessing hearing you prayer, you know, over all the necessity. But let me tell you something. It doesn't matter what country and what continent that you live in. We all depend on the Lord. If you don't depend on the Lord, you don't believe in God. We all depend on the Lord. It is something that we need to get in our heads. God made us to his image, but he is the one who makes things all happen. We are only instruments on his hands. And he knows what you need. He knows your situation. Let me tell you, pastors in Asia, you are a servant of the Lord. He will provide you needs for you and your family. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You are a minister. You are doing the work of the Lord. And as long as you're faithful to the Lord, he will be faithful to you, to your family, to your congregation. We need to understand we serving the only living God. There's only one God. The other ones are God with, you know, with a small G. We're serving the only one. And he's faithful. And he wants to bless you. He wants to take care of you. He wants to make sure you're okay. He said everything you ask in my name he will do. So if you need something for the right reasons... No, for selfish reasons, like the other person said. But there's one thing that a lot of us are lacking. We're lacking faith. Sometimes we pray, but we don't even believe what we're praying for. A lot of times we need to come to understanding before we pray. What are we going to pray about? I don't know if, if you um, if you ever pray, and after you pray, you're like, wow, I should have asked the Lord this in a different way. If you had the chance, if I could pray it again, I will pray the right way. It's important that you read the scriptures. So you have an understanding in your heart and your spirit that when you pray, you pray with an understanding that the Lord is able to do everything. In Philippians 4.13, I can do all things to Jesus Christ. Don't recite it. Believe it. Inscript it in your heart that if you believe in Jesus and then you believe that he can do all, you can do all things through him, you're going to understand that you have that power, that you have that authority. But as long as we, we get it in our heart, not just in our mind, because in your mind, you're going to see that you're very limited. That you as a human being, you have limitations. You cannot fly. No, you can't. You know, so there's a lot of limitations. But in reality, the word of God says you can do all things through Jesus Christ. So tonight, I want you to grasp it. Asia. The Lord is with you. Grab on to, hold on to it, and pray on his name because that's what he asks us to do. Today, the Lord is saying that we have to pray with faith. James 1, 6 says, but when you pray, you must believe in no doubt at all. Whoever doubt is like a wave in the sea that is driven and blown about the wind. He said, if you are like that, Unable to make up your mind and undecided and all you do, you must not think that you will receive anything from the Lord. If you don't have faith, 
We all lack faith. All of us. All of us lack faith. But that's something that we need to start believing. We need to start working on it. I believe in you, Lord. But, you know, because if we don't, we're not going to receive what we ask for. It, and it might be something you really need. It, it might be something that is a necessity in your life. But you're not going to get it if you doubt yourself. When you pray for somebody who has a need, that person needs to believe that he can get it. He has faith that the Lord can provide, that the Lord can heal it. But you, if you're praying for that person, you have to have faith. You have to believe that what you're asking the Lord, he can do. He can do everything. So we have to get our faith in the right mind. There's nothing that the Lord cannot do. So we have to stop doubting. Look what faith, the Lord said that faith is, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, when you pray, is that it is something that you know that the Lord can do, and you know in your heart, you have peace in your heart, that he will answer your need. Let me tell you a little story. In November, my wife was in Legaspi in the Philippines. And there was a big typhoon that hit it. And they said it was almost as strong as the one 30 years prior. 30 years ago, it destroyed and it killed so many people. Us and our church, the one my, my wife and I pastor, it's a small congregation. But let me tell you. The word of God says, well, two or more gather in my name. I am with you. So that night, we started praying for the people. We didn't care about the building. We didn't care about the car. We didn't care about the material goods. We care about the people. So the congregation and I started praying. And we asked the Lord, Lord, have mercy on those people. Lord, can those people don't let any single life die? And let me tell you, <laughs> my God is faithful. Not a single person died. Okay, a lot of people lost the roofs of their house. But let me tell you, not a single person died. Because my God is a living God. He's the only one who can make it. I don't care how much money a human being can have or what he can buy. He cannot save lives. He cannot turn, you know, the typhoon. Just remember Jesus was on the, on the boat with his disciples, and it was a storm. They were, he was fall asleep, and, the, and all his disciples were worried. And he told the, told the, you know, the, the storm to come down, and he come down. His disciples were amazed. Like, who is this that even the wind obeys him? He is the living God, the one who can make everything. That's your God. That's my God. Not, not a piece of a wood standing on a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a church. It's not, a, it's not made out of wood. He's real. And he lives within you. And he lives within me. This is the God that you and I pray for. This is the God we ask thanks for. The real one. The real living God. That's who you God is. That's who my God is. So if you have faith, declare those things. Lord, I believe that you can do all things. I have faith. And when you finish praying, have peace. You've done your part. Let the Lord do his, the rest. What you and I do is the 1%. It just asks. The Lord does the other 99%. That is your God. And if you believe it, if you believe it, you're going to see the glory of God. A lot of us, we live life like there's no tomorrow. We have to have a purpose in our lives. Uh, I read this a while back. This is another testimony that I'm going to share with you after I read these this, uh, six verses. In 2 Kings 21 says, About this time, Ezekiah got sick and he was almost dead. Isaiah the prophet 
went and I told and he told him, the Lord says that you won't ever get well. You are going to die. So you have you had better start doing what needs to be done. Ezekiah turned toward the wall and prayed. Don't forget that I have been faithful to you, Lord. I have obeyed you with all my heart, and I do whatever you say is right. After he after this he cried hard. And he said, Before Isaiah got to the middle court of the palace, the Lord sent him back to Ezekiah with this message. Ezekiah, you are the ruler of my people, and I am the Lord your God, who was who was worshipped by your ancestor David. I heard you pray, and I saw you cry. I will hear you, so that the three days from now on you will be able to worship to worship in my temple. I will let you live 15 years more while I protect you and your city from the kings of Assyria. I will defend this city as an honor to me and to my ser servant David. When you are right in the eyes of God, when you do the right things before the eyes of the Lord, you can go in front of him with the purpose of life. Ezekiah had not finished what he needed to do, do in, this, in this earth, but he's done the right things before the eyes of the Lord. So he went in and, and he asked the Lord, Lord, you are my everything. I serve you. I, I was, I've been faithful to you. I serve you. I, I worship you. He was able to change the Lord's heart towards him. And he healed him. And he gave him another 15 years more of life. My mother-in-law was sick. And everybody thought she, she was going to die. And again, the small congregation in East Palo Alto, we got together and we started praying. And that was my prayer to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. The woman has tried to serve you. The woman, you know, has preached the word of God to anybody who she needs to get in contact with. Have mercy on her life. Allow her 15 more years. And she got better. I don't know that the Lord is going to give her 15 years. But she's alive. She didn't die. If every day you work in your faith and you make it stronger and stronger, knowing who your God is, you can go to him and ask him to prolong your life. To solve your issue. To provide you that need. To heal you from that illness. There's nothing impossible for our God. The only thing is that you have to believe. You have to believe. The Lord asked us. And brother, I don't know if it was Sister Raquel or, or Brother Freddy who said this. Who read this again. First of Thessalonians 5.16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. You have to be in communion with God all the time. This is not, this is not a weekly thing. This is every moment of your life. When you get up, you know, you thank the God for what, you know, give you another day of life. When you go to work, you know, you thank the Lord, you know, to take you safely. When you return, you give him things because he brought you back safely. Because, you know, he allowed you to, to work and, you know, earn, you know, money to, to sustain your family. Thank the Lord because you have a place to live. That you have food on your table. Because you have all, it's, it's a context. So pray without ceasing. You don't have to stop. Be in communication with the Lord all the time. It's a relationship. It's, it's not a male in friendship. It's a personal relationship. You live with the Lord 
24-7. Every second of your life, you live with him. So you don't have to stop. He's there with you. And he wants to be with you. He wants to help you. Luke 18, 1 says, Also, Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they all that ought to always to pray and not to turn coward, faint, lose heart, and give up. The Lord was telling me a story that we don't have to give up, that we don't have to be afraid because he's in our corner. He's in our side. He's there to help us. We don't have to be afraid. I mentioned healing. I've seen so many miracles that the Lord has done. He has healed so many people, and including myself. So when you ask the Father, ask with faith. You remember, you need faith in order to happen. If you don't have faith, you won't see the miracles. You won't see the work of the Lord in your life. You need to have faith. Mark 140 says, A man with leprosy came to Jesus and kneeled down. He begged, he said, You have the power to make me well if you only wanted to. Jesus felt sorry for the man. So he put his hands on him and he said, I want to. Now you are well. At once the man's leprosy disappeared and he was well. That's when he was here on its earth. He had a human body. But now he said that he left, but he left his Holy Spirit. So we can ask. We might not see him personally, but he's there. In the same way with the, with the faith that these men ask, we need to ask the Lord for those things. My wife was praying for all those, those pastors some of them have passed. Some of them have recovered. This pandemic has affected everybody. But let me tell you, we have a promise of God that if this body, you know, dies, we're going to go to sleep and we're going to wait for him. Amen. That's the promise we have. We have a promise of eternal life. But I understand. But when we're in this body, we have suffering. We have illnesses. So we need to ask the Lord to help us understand the purpose of some things. He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans of well-being. So he wants us to be okay. He wants us to be good. He wants us to be prosperous. He wants us to be healthy. But there are things that are going to happen in our life. But are we going to believe the illness or are we going to believe our Lord? I go for my Lord. You know, he, he, can, he can heal me. Uh, it was funny because Pastor Freddy started reading, you know, part of my, my scripture that I had here. And first of King 3, 7, Oh, Lord, you have let me succeed my, succeed my father as king. Even though I am a very young and don't know how to rule, here I am among the people you have chosen to be your own, a people who are so many that they cannot be counted. So give me the wisdom. I need to rule your people with justice and to know that the difference between good and evil. Otherwise, how would I ever be able to rule these great people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon has asked for this. And so he said to him, because you have asked me for the wisdom to rule justly instead of a long life for yourself or riches or the death of your enemies. So I will make you wiser than anyone who has ever lived or ever will live. I will also give you, you didn't ask for it. You will be rich and respected as long as you live. And you'll be greater than any other king. If you obey me and follow my command, as your father David did, I will let you live a long time. When you pray, be smart. Think about what you need. 
Sometimes we ask the Lord for things that we don't really need. Instead of helping us, instead of being a blessing to our life, they become a problem. Sometimes we ask the Lord for a big, big house. And then we don't have time to clean it. Sometimes you ask the Lord for a fast car. What do you need a fast car for? There's a speed limit everywhere you go. You can get into an accident. You can kill somebody. That's something that you don't really need. So let's be smart. Let's be like Solomon. Ask for wisdom. Lord, give us. Lord is going to help us. The Lord is going to help us. And we're going to ask. I need you to be ready. I need you to think how we're going to ask the Lord. And we're almost done. Are you grateful to God when he provides you, when he delivers you? Are you grateful to God? I am. I'm like a kid. When he helped me through a problem, whenever he provides something that I need, whenever he heals me, I'm grateful. I'm like a kid. I'm a, I'm a child. He's my father. So are you grateful? Col uh, Colossians 3.15 said, The peace that Christ gave us is to guide you in, in the decision you make. For it is to this peace that God has called you together in the one body. And be thankful. Christ's message in all his richness must live in your heart. Teach and instruct one another with all wisdom. Sing psalms, hymns, and sacred song. Sing to God with thanksgiving in your hearts. Everything you do or say then should be done in the name of the Lord Jesus as you give thanks through him to God the Father. Everything through him. Forgiveness. Luke 23, 34. And Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they not know what they are doing and dividing his garment they cast a lot. That's what they did to the Lord. The Lord prayer for us because we don't know what we're doing. That's what we need, the guidance of the Holy Spirit in our lives because sometimes we don't know what we're doing. And I'm going to finish with this and then we're going to pray. Pray with a purpose. Matthew 21, 22. And whatever you ask for in prayer, having faith and really believing, you will receive. I already told you what we're going to pray about. I don't know what the Lord gave my wife to share with you tonight. But right now, I want to I wanna pray. I'm a simple man. I can't do. I'm very limited. I don't have any powers. I don't have any talents. But I have one God that can do all things. So please join me on this prayer. We need the Lord to work on the situation that we're living in. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord, as your children. You, you know our needs. We know this, you know the situation, you know, that we're confronting in the world. You know this terrible virus that has affected thousands and thousands of people, including your own people, Lord. Just like Moses, I come before you, Lord, to ask you for mercy for all those people who has contracted the virus, Lord. I need you to put your, man, your hand, Lord. I need you to put your powerful hand in and stop the spreading of this virus, Lord, in a miraculous way. Lord, in Asia, in America, in Africa, in Europe, in Australia, Lord, in all the places in the world, Lord. There's nothing impossible for you. And I ask, Lord, this in Jesus' name. I believe that you can do it, Lord. I believe that you're going to stop the spreading of this horrible virus, Lord. I know that you had a 
purpose for this situation, Lord, and we understand. Maybe it's because you're coming, Lord. We know that you're near. We're waiting for you. But, Lord, in the meantime, have mercy. Have mercy on those people who are suffering in the hospitals, Lord. People who are dying, Lord, have mercy on their souls. I ask you to please do something great, Lord. Amaze us one more time with your greatness, with your glory, Lord. Glorify yourself among your people, Lord. Can they see your power? They can see that you can do all things, Lord. I ask you all these things in the mighty, powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Brothers, one day the Lord is going to allow me to be with you in the Philippines or in Japan, in Bhutan. One day the Lord will give me that gift of be with you. <music>